All right, everybody, as promised, I'm back. I'm gonna cover a short EGR tune-up. And what I have here is a 2013 model ISX CM2350. The truck is a 2014 model, but the engine is a 13 model. So keep that in mind when you're talking about trucks and engines. Just cause you got a 14 model truck does not mean you got a 14 model motor. A lot of times 14 model trucks has 11 and 12 model, model motors in them. It's not too common to have a couple years out, but most of the time the motor is going to be one year behind the truck in the cases that I've seen. So everybody with these baby red motors, I'm going to go ahead and uh, save you a bunch of money because an IMAP sensor is something that can show all kinds of different fault codes. And long story short, you might get a new turbo and all kinds of other junk out of it, now, which is all right if you're under warranty. But if you're out of warranty, you know, you're looking at five, ten, up to $15,000 worth of shop bills that you don't need. It can be narrowed down to this little piece right here, the IMAP sensor. This right here, this little sensor right here. You undo this little bolt right here. It's an eight millimeter. It's got a little tab right here. I wish I've already loosened it up. You slide that little tab out of the way, unplug. I always unplug it first before I pull the thing out. Let me see if I can do this right. So, I will, um, damn, it's hard to do it with one hand. I have a hit with it. Usually I'll do it. You might have to wiggle this thing a little bit. Just be careful with it because you don't want any any of the soot breaking off. You seen my last video, they cake up pretty good. So what you want to do is be easy with it. Take your time and pull it out. And that's what, what it looks like. If you seen my last video, this thing was covered up. But if it's painted red like this, it's a clear indication. It's the uh, OEM, it came from the factory. If you got a couple hundred thousand miles on it, Roz always recommends 250,000 miles replace this sensor. It ain't but like 30, 40 bucks. And uh, it can save you a lot of headache. If you got sheet fuel mileage, change it out. I mean, if you can see in there, it's got a little sensing bulb and it could really give you some horrible fuel mileage. But uh, let's see if I can set this somewhere where I can attach this. Put this little pin right here, just push this down. I think it's down. Yeah, so here it's now. You pull it out. That's all there is to it. I'm gonna go ahead and put the new one in. And I'll pick back up in a second. And then we're gonna get on to another sensor that I feel is pretty important to change out. So be right back. Okay, and I'm back. Got the new one in. If it don't look like this, then it means it hasn't been changed out. So you might want to change that out. Like I said, it's just a little tight and a little snug going back in because you got a new O-ring on it. So you might have to put a little bit of a little bit of power on this right here and just kind of wiggle it back and forth as you push it down, but then slide your little tab back over it right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and snug her down. I don't know what the torque specs is on this right here, but I'm pretty sure if you watch one of Roz's old videos, <laughs> he, he covers all of that stuff. He's like a walking encyclopedia to these motors. On this right here, I just, I give it a good snug, not too tight. And uh, that's all there is for that. And the part number on that, will come in a little bitty box like this right here. Part number 2897334. That's for the eye mount. So if you need this part number, for a 2013 model, there's your part number. Now it may be compatible with the 14 models, 15 models, I'm not sure. But then again, right here, sit down on the bottom end of that sticker where it says CM2350. So if you look at the ECM, if it don't say that, then you've got a 2250. Now let's get on to the depth of pressure. Right, now that I'm done with the depth of the eye mount, I'm gonna do a little pup, little miniature schnauzer. 
she needs a cut but we've been taking her to the groomer for the last month to get her used to the groomer so when they do get ready to cut her it won't be a uh, traumatic experience now this little part right here it's got two bolts i was wrong earlier it's not a 12 millimeter it's a 13 millimeter right here and right here and this right here is a little stiff so i pushed it back and this little pin which see if i can pop it back in place okay it's this little pin right here it sticks out a little further than that but i always take a screwdriver and push it and when you push it it labels enables this tab get that out of the way hold on just a second and I, this little tab right here you push it down and i had a time getting this thing off so i had to use both hands i had to push down and rock it back and forth until it broke loose and then like i said push this little tab back and that's all you got to do and then this tab right here push it down you don't want to pull it up push it down and you might get a little bit of problems taking that out it was in there snug because it ain't been changed and it's got 400,000 miles on it but it broke loose all right i'll be right back let me go ahead and loosen this thing up and change it out all right i got it loosened up so i'm gonna use the camera to see what i'm doing here pull these bolts out i set them right there out of the way because let's see pull this up oh oh it's <laughs> god could you see that let me see if i can tap on that screen it's curled it up uh, let's see here let me hold it real steady and push the picture yeah it's hard to do justice but got a lot of soot build up right there let's see if i can't blow that out and let me set this down here this is the bottom of your delta pressure sensor and it's all dirty let me pull out the new one All right, the new one, you're looking at old and new. That one still don't want to clear up. Maybe I just can't hold my hand steady enough. And it's, it's all suited up, so it's time to change that one out. This is your Delta pressure sensor, Delta P. And the part number on that one Let's see here. And again, this is for a 2013 model CM 2350. Part number 4307166. And it's gonna look a little bit like this. Let's pull this little tab off. Pull the cover off. And we got a new one. Well, I can't keep this camera focusing. You can see a huge difference there. Set these down and hold it steady. <laughs> yeah, it's time to change. Now, God, I wish I could get down in that pipe. I probably could just take it off and clean it out, but as soon as I start this thing up, any soot down in there is just gonna blow into the new one. But that'll be all right. All right, I'll be right back. All right, I got her all bolted up and locked back in place. You see how that pin sticks out now. So, like I said, I always just set a screwdriver right here and I push on that to unlock it. And then this little tab right here, I just push it down with one hand and put my other hand right here and kind of wiggle it back and forth until it comes loose. That's your depth of pressure sensor. Depth of P. Now, so see. There we go. Get it all covered back up. Another sensor you want to keep in place is this right here. It's your EGR temp sensor. It's always in the same on the 2250. It's in the elbow here. And this right here should get me a lot of likes because it's going to save you a lot of money. Next time you have EGR problems and you're broke down on the side of the road, do not call a tow truck. You can't do it on all engines or all trucks. I think the Freightliners won't allow you to, which, no, I have a buddy used to do it. His Freightliner allowed him to. I could do it in my my 660, my Kenworth I had. 
I haven't even tried it in this truck yet, but this little sensor right here in the elbow is your EGR temp sensor. And if it, you get shut down on the side of the road before you call a tow truck, pull this little tab back and right here, you'll see. Let's see if I can just break it loose. Again, on this one, take this tab right here, push it down, and then push this tab and pull it off. And what that will do is shut down your EGR components, your all your, your emissions, and it'll turn it off. That's called the magic plug. So I don't recommend you running like that because you still got DPF sensors. That's gonna be suited up and clogged up. Your DLC, your SCR, and your DPF canister is all still gonna clog up. But to get you to the shop and avoid anywhere from two, three hundred to a thousand dollar tow bill, unplug this. It doesn't. It won't do anything to your motor just to get you to the shop. I used to do it with my Kenworth 660. Never had a problem with it. So that right there's a money saver. Next one you want to check on is this one right here. This right here is your dozing valve. This one looks like it's been replaced, so I'm not gonna worry about this one. This is a good one to get replaced. I'm making it three or four hundred bucks. I don't know. I haven't had to buy one. I just unbolted mine, lifted it up, and scraped it out. Worked, worked pretty good. But the, not, if I'm thinking correctly, this sensor right here cost me ninety bucks. The DPF sensor or the uh, shit Delta P sensor. It was like eighty or ninety bucks. I map sensor was like thirty or forty. But like a hundred. I, hell, I can't even keep up with it. Relatively small in price comparison to fuel mileage you're gonna save. So if you're getting horrible fuel mileage, go buy yourself these sensors and replace them. And if you get really drastic, let me walk around here. Hold on, Cash, I'm making a video, buddy. You get real drastic, you can take this whole intake off from i would unbolt the metal part. I wouldn't worry about this right here because you might have problems getting them sealed back up. Unbolt the metal part. Unbolt them from the head there. Pull it off. Clean all the soot out. But at the same time, I took mine off on my 2250 on my 660 I had. And it wasn't all that cobbed up inside there. So I kind of regretted taking it off. But it was a good learning experience. So I'm not even going to worry about taking this one off. They don't have the soot problem as bad as the 871s did. They had that little EGR venturi tube or whatever you want to call it they was uh pretty limited on space and they clog up not so bad on these from what i've seen but uh hope this helps somebody with the egr tune-up i'm out delta pressure sensor dozing valve egr temp sensor that's the main ones that i covered and remember that magic plug next time you have egr problems um, all you got to do is unplug it, get in the truck, crank it up. If your truck runs, then drive it to the shop. But if there's something in the program that won't allow it to run, then your truck's going to fire up, it's going to idle for a second, and then it's going to die. That's no big deal. Just plug it back up. And you fire your engine back up in a couple of seconds, ECM will reset, and it's like, hey, we're hooked back up. We can go now. So it's no big deal. But it's worth a shot to keep from having to spend the night on the side of the interstate. So I recommend it highly. I do it. Done it. I'll do it again. But anyway, hope this helps. To the next video. Oh yeah, I got my I went and got me a 2013 model Great Dane the other day to hook up to this, so that'll be my next video. And it's about time to start making money. <laughs> See you guys. Please. All right, one last video. What's me in it? Yeah. What do you got to say, buddy? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Just show you. You don't need no computer programming or anything like that. I just got through hooking everything up. So let's fire it up.
nutshell, guys, and something else I didn't cover. Uh, just in case the mechanic or the guy at the shop gives you the wrong sensors, it's a good idea. I just threw my used sensors into my tool bag. I hate to get going down the road and find out they've given you the wrong sensor or you know something happens to go wrong with it. So I put the, uh, the old sensors in my tool bag. And I'll probably keep them there for a couple months until I know these are not going to sit me on the side of the road. Anyway, guys, I'm going to break out my bolt meter and find out what some tabs on the back of my truck is and get ready to hook up some uh, more lights. i also done these today, too. That one that comes with it, factory, just ain't enough. So I went and got me some LEDs. way to light up real nice and red so I can see my floorboard in there. <laughs> anyway guys, I'll check you in another video in a day or three. I go hook up to my trailer and get ready to start making money. Say bye Cash. Well, subscribe and bye. <laughs> See you again. Bye.